this is a way to get around all the hate that the pride parade sometimes get. Just have an elite squad of uh, spec ops there <laughs> in gay ass armor. That would be great. How's it going, people? Jack here, away for another video. Welcome back to the Chill Zone. So, today I have uh, another exciting one from the incognito mode here on weapons. Personally, I am a fan of melee weapons, less of firearms, but I don't shy away from wanting to learn about them. For if I had some sort of like decree, like some ultimate decree on how warfare should be waged, I would like it to go back to the good old swords and spears and whatnot. Because like, <laughs> I'm imagining scenes similarly to the one with the Black Knight, you know, <laughs> trying to convince the enemy that they should either lay their arms down and or follow you on your mission or whatever. So I'll make things with these calls. And if it doesn't work, cut them down limb by limb. Yes, it's a little bit drastic, but I'd actually rather have that than have my body be poisoned by a lead bullet, having my ritualized or red blood cells being poisoned and liver shutting down and slowly dying to an agonizing oh! death. That would suck. But that's just my take on weapons. I know it's a bit weird, but I'm chill with it. But we gotta check out what the internet historian alongside with ordinary things have to say on weapons. <laughs> Weapons. Am I good with a weapon? Yes. Am I carrying weapons on me? Always. Pistols at sunset, the bullets don't reach that far. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, check out this weapon I just made. Stay still. Predator missiles. Oh. In league with the torpedoes. Tactical airstrike. Why, what's torpedoes. Air supposed to do? All this and more on this episode of in the, the battlefield. Battle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I sound weird. It's because I went to the Asian uh, supermarket today. Yeah. Because we bought some astroturf. Fake grass. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to take care of it, so we astroturfed some of the backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. It looks like shit. Anyway, <laughs> I would imagine cat has started shitting on the astroturf. <laughs> Good kitty. Oh, no, I can't just kill the neighbor's cat. I'll, I don't think I can get away with that. I didn't want to get into it with the neighbors either. Uh, excuse me. Do you know you've got a cat and it shits on like you can't police a cat in the same way that you can a dog. That's right. A cats are a law unto themselves. <laughs> so I went to the Chinese supermarket, right? Because obviously the thing to do is to buy about three liters of chili oil and then fill a <gasps> weed. Oh my god! What is wrong with him? <laughs> First of all, he also turf his, his backyard. That's just all kind of wrong. It's not that difficult to take care of a garden. This is coming from somebody who ruined their parents' plans for years, decade even, before I finally had my own. But uh, it's not that hard, really. And also to take care of a cat, there are other methods to do that, They're like sprinklers and all. It's perhaps a better method than this. You're going to ruin your fake garden Spray at the same time. It, and then just start spraying the whole garden in chili oil to the point where it just kind of turns red. And then it starts trying to take a shit and then it goes, oh god. It turns the <laughs> grass red or it turns the shit red and you're hoping... Everything is like red. ...scare the cat. So, <laughs> something's going wrong here. Oh, oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> so, you know, the grass is looking a lot redder than it usually does. Wait, this is the AstroTurf? So yeah. you've essentially just dyed fake grass red? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and, you know, the whole place reeks of chili oil. Ew. <laughs> that shit's there anyway. Then, boy, is he going to have won this war. Could you not have just <laughs> let the shitting continue? And uh... No, it's an outrageous amount of shit. He's taking, like, three shits a day. <laughs> like, he doesn't even keep it to the sort of back of the property where you wouldn't notice it. It's, like, right on the front. That's the first <laughs> thing a guest would see. And, and then we've got a cat. And so people think, oh, you guys are... <laughs> dirty Why just nasty up after you so no you don't un <sighs> so, anyway that's the reason i went to the asian supermarket and while i was there there was some sour candy oh that's the full story of why i'm eating sour candy wow <laughs> the gay bomb so you've seen the gay bomb right uh, i've heard of it i'm fascinated by it naturally it was it was theoretical right yeah. wait in 1994 the u.s military actually considered building a gay bomb the idea of a gay bomb came from the desire to deliberate and distract their opponents but nothing says what 
Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> I love that it's Simon Fisher is okay. rainbow. Yeah, I think the bomb. chief idea behind it was okay, you make your enemy uninhibited uh -huh. and extremely aroused, <laughs> and then they are more likely in a non combat situation <laughs> to start doing it with each other. Uh, it wouldn't right. be in a fight. No one's going to go, oh, I'm just too horny to fight. And they just start <laughs> running at their own men in the other direction. Well, it's another uh, way of getting away with pent-up aggression. You've got your wife back home and your kids. What if you come home gay? Sorry, honey. I've got to be my true self now. This might really backfire because it might make the opposing army like even more bonded with one another. It's <laughs> like, I've got to yes. save my dude because like, <laughs> he's great. He's... I love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's my soulmate. It's like super elite gay army. It's just you and me, skin on skin, stripped to the waist. <laughs> that are just so loyal to one another that they are unstoppable. Just like rolling in rainbow camouflage. Everybody's just like super afraid of them. <laughs> this is a way to get around all the hate that the Pride Parade sometimes get. Just have an elite squad of uh, spec ops there. <laughs> In gay ass armor, that would be great. What about guns? Have you ever fired a gun? Yeah, only a rifle. Yeah, I thought it was pretty neat. When I was in America, I made a beeline for the gun range. Yeah. Went full hog. I wanted to see what it was like, and uh, yeah, it yeah. turns out, yeah, it really made me feel like a man. <laughs> People do say that though, you know, a bit dismissively, but there must be something absolutely instinctual about holding a weapon. You will sort of notice it when you, if you ever go for a hike and you pick up a stick that just feels really well yeah. weighted to hold and you could use it like a weapon. Like a bow I staff. I myself like naturally carrying that around and just sort of feeling good about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the ultimate tool. Yeah, I bet there's something about that. In the past, the ones that pick up a pretty good stick and just walk around with it survive a lot more. Absolutely. They're so loud, though. Oh, God. I can't stand how loud they are. Yeah. Oh, silencers are banned in most states, I no. think. And it seems to me like the reason that that legislation has come into place is because everybody watches the movies and thinks that a gun with a silencer on it sounds like... <laughs> That's so true. And I actually had a similar thought not until, like, I think four years ago, where my dad started to since he t retired started collecting guns and with it bought himself a silencer so we would be firing in the backyard and trying that and they're still loud as fuck i mean not as loud as the actual thing but yeah suppressed yeah yeah like it's a that's what man, they do but it's actually just there so it you don't go fucking deaf nullify it's still really <laughs> loud I suppose you wouldn't Busy be there. able to recognize that sound so regularly. No. Can you silence a shotgun? Oh, you can. Actually, uh, adds Whoa. a degree of style to it. The, the silencer is a bit like uh, adding a mustache <laughs> to a gun. Yeah, yeah. It does make it look a lot cooler. you got to admit that much. Like, oh, that lame. Oh. Hey. <laughs> that's, like, immediately cool. Dun, dun, dun. Like, I even think he becomes more handsome <laughs> yeah, between look. shots, Ooh. you know? Play it again. I'm going to close my eyes and just this is a welcome to my favorite game show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, silenced yeah, yeah, yeah. or unsilenced. <laughs> All right. Well, I was definitely silenced. Oh, si it sounded like silence no, too. But I couldn't really tell. Okay, how about this one? Also that silenced. Is definitely not silenced. That Do you all have silenced. a compressed Full wavelength? Hog. Interesting. Silence. Also silenced. It's like you add a low pass filter onto everything. Okay, all four of those were silenced. Ah, oh, you, you tricked me. <laughs> I did. You correctly guessed that it was behind a pillow. That's a bloody good one, isn't it? Because that wouldn't silence anything. I mean, it might make it quieter for the person who's getting shot. <laughs> 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 Why the hell else would that work? I'm just going to put the pillow on so it doesn't hurt your ears. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> silencer. 120.7. I like the idea that off screen <laughs> it's just like someone tied to a chair. <laughs> yeah. oh. Now we'll use the pillow. All right, Jerry. I'm Jerry? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. What's nice. the deal with airplane peanuts? Oh, uh, yeah. But it only went up to 102 decibels. 120.7. CNN shows fully Samuel. This is the AR-15. Right. A lot of people Wait. buy this just because it's cool. They look like my pants. <laughs> I had to like <laughs> I had to like stop there for a moment. <laughs> a mother. 
Do you want to shoot a gun with me, mother? <laughs> why else would you buy a gun? Is it illegal to look cool now? Is that what I think that's why you call his I'm wife, sorry, isn't I it? I really dislike the sort of moralistic tone there. I'm just like, some people just buy this gun to be cool. Yeah, of course. Isn't that the reason for half the things we do? <laughs> yes. You buy a slightly nicer car, or yeah. you cut your hair a certain way. Did you just get that haircut to look cool? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> the defining characteristic of the AR-15 is the speed and power of the bullet. <laughs> the whole <laughs> defining feature no, of the bullet is wow. so fast <laughs> and are powerful. Yeah, well, it's no good. <laughs> Top tier journalism. I do like, who fired this bullet? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the hell happened here? It looks like a classic like GoldenEye N64 bullet hole as well. <laughs> it's, it's classic. <laughs> you fire too many and these True. ones start disappearing. All right, ordinary things, let's do gun lessons from people who also don't know much about guns, but I know a little bit. Do you know what the difference is between automatic, semi-automatic, pump action? Pump action is the one that, yeah. where you've got to sort of like jerk the gun off <laughs> before it'll fire again. <laughs> Semi-automatic's more like... Doo -doo, doo -doo. Yeah, yeah, one trigger pull, one bullet. An automatic is like... <laughs> yeah, you hold it down and it goes all Gunkers over the place. <laughs> if I wanted to fire this on full semi-automatic, all I do is keep firing. Now, I won't probably... What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. quick, quick translate then. How do they both look like Tim Cook? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Tim Cook and Mike Pence had a baby. <laughs> That's sweet. I don't like the way I can see the outline of his nipples through his shirt. I kind of feel like, for the news, just screen, where, screen. like, I don't... Do you find it erotic? Can you yeah. not focus? Yeah. What I find distracting is that one seems much lower than the other. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? It's a weapon designed to inflict maximum damage. It's a weapon. <laughs> it's a gun. No shit. And not enough people are using Nord. So much of their private data is out in the open. I have to show everyone why Nord matters. Da -da -da -da. Huge deal on a three-year plan. <laughs> Pirating movies. He always I has the best the ads. Store his with history. That guy is gay. <laughs> <laughs> He's not buying that for his dog. <laughs> Are you sure it's COVID? Da, 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 da. It's like, sorry, wrong building. <laughs> da, 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 da. Chinese spy. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just tired of being. Did you find some cream for that rash, Sarah? Oh. <laughs> Da, da. Up, up the grave. <laughs> Looks like I'm too late to save you hundreds of dollars with region-specific pricing on funerals. Oh, why? I couldn't let you expose my secret that I actually enjoy playing Field of Tanks Mobile. Goodbye. Hey, you could have just used Nord. Nobody would have known. <laughs> Will Nord survive? Will the sponsorship contract Well, be we'll really never know because we need that VPN. On. Also, you get a huge deal of two year plan plus four free extra months. Yay! Nord.com slash incognito. They have got to constantly and ask him when if he wants a, kid, a sponsorship. There was a brand of sour it's great. Candy called Toxic Waste. Do you, do you get that in Australia? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came in the little tub. I love that stuff. Oh, man. I've been addicted <laughs> to sour candy since I can remember and of course you know the more that you're told that you're not allowed something the more alluring it becomes yeah. i was about five or six i'd sneak some change from the kitchen counter i would take a bit of a side route on the way home and go to the old dairy and sometimes they would have this sour candy and it oh. was uh five cents a piece and i'd go in there and i'd buy like a dollar's worth i'd scoff it all down the way home one day i got like five bucks worth of coins that Damn. gave you like 50 pieces and 50 pieces is way too many to finish by the mm -hmm. time you get home. So I had like half a bag full. Um, I'm going to have to hide this somehow. I'll just hide it under my shirt. And I walked into the house thinking no one's going to be the wiser. And my sister, the first thing she <laughs> saw, she's like, what's under your shirt? <laughs> oh, nothing. And I go running to my room. And maybe it was my mom and my dad. I don't know. They come running after. They go, what was that? What do you got? What do you got? I then like ran out and then I just ran to the neighbors. It was like being caught with drugs. And I knew this neighbor kid. And I was like, you got to take this. You got to take <laughs> and he takes it and he hides it under the cushion and the couch in the lounge. And then I walk out the door of the neighbor's place. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs>
it was not suspicious at all. Sweating from the sour candy as well. <laughs> when I was a kid, my contraband was the violent horror movies and such. Oh, no. And I remember oh. one time my dad drove me to a sleepover and I wanted to bring some horror movies that I had squirreled away in my room. <laughs> this is great. Your mum's cleaning your room and she like looks under your bed and instead of like porno mags, it's just nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, uh-huh. that, that did eventually <laughs> happen. <laughs> and my dad got given a stern talk to it. <laughs> you can't oh, hide it no, away no, from things. us, boy. Let me tell you all about the birds and bees. Oh, gee, pa. Oh, shucks. Oh, no. I don't know nothing American about all that business. <laughs> then you take her boyfriend's face and you put it on your face and that's when you run into the room. Possibly inspired by watching Midnight Express. Um, I like, <laughs> got the DVDs and like taped them to my torso under my t-shirt and I was just sat next to my dad on the, on the drive there. So did you get caught? No, I didn't. But, uh, oh, what? <laughs> Isn't there a big square <laughs> Shirt. I think I put a, like a jumper on as well. If I recall, actually, I remember my dad saying, "I can't you warm in that." I think it was summer. And already sweating. Like, what if he catches me with Kill Bill Volume Two oh, under my shirt? Okay. So did you watch the movie at the place? So I don't think people were too impressed. Right. <laughs> Do you want to watch this? Some guy gets his head cut off. No, man. Like, just want to talk about girls. And stuff. <laughs> we're just trying to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. oh, I was hoping I could ruin all your nights. <laughs> I remember my one contraband that really got my parents pissed was during a day at school. I had gotten a fresh new outfit, like a very, like, very white piece of, uh, like, a jumpsuit that I was only supposed to wear on special occasions. And during our PE day, I decided to smuggle that to school because... For once in a while, I wanted to show off because like some rich kid at school was already um, talking about how he got his new uh, Nikes or whatever. So I brought that with me and it was all nice. But I, of course, decided to bring that during PE and it got all dirty and tried to smuggle that back in. And at the time we would wear uniforms uh, because I went to a private school and coming back home, I would try just to do the most asinine thing, walking like was I in the 007 movie, right? And my mom, of course, notices like with the eye of a falcon, like, boy, <laughs> what are you doing? And nothing. Empty your bag. Gosh, darn it. Woman, why do you see everything? Yeah, I got reprimanded so hard that day. People get a fake foot, they lose it in a... Bar brawl of some kind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they give you a fake foot. So what would you do if you could have, like, any sort of fake foot become a weapon? What would the weapon be? A sword. Well, about... It looks like a normal foot, mm. but then I take it off and it's just, like, one big titanium spike. Yeah. You could, like, twist it off and replace it with other things, like a snooker cue. Or, <laughs> Sweet um, you know, foot. Those, like, grabbers. Okay, so this isn't really a weapon. This is a multi-tool. Yeah, I think so. You I want, would... a, like, a Swiss Army foot. Yeah, a multi-tool. <laughs> multi-foot. That would be quite good. You're caught in the wilderness or whatever, and then you've just got a whole bunch of tools in there. Yeah. You know, oh, no problem. Let me start a fight. I would probably have um, it would be a gun for sure. This is when you're in the woods, is it? Well, see, well, I'm next to you right now. Yeah. I've got my multi tool and I've just like <laughs> twisted my axe attachment on and I'm just like kicking wood. I'm kicking trees <laughs> down. Yeah, I'll shoot you. <laughs> Special <laughs> and then I'll take your multi tool. You won't have the twisty bit. Yeah, you've got it like a key. <laughs> exactly. It'll click out of one. The one of them is like a wheel powered by an engine that if I just balance on that <laughs> one wheel, I running can like on go petroleum. around like Rosie and the Jetsons. Oh shit, that would be good. Like those wheelie shoes, but it's diesel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a, you know, someone who's completely normal and well adjusted, I have thought about if you were to kill someone, like what would be the best way to get away with it? Yeah. You know, people could have these elaborate plans of kill him and all like burn the body acid. in the bath. Nah, nah. The best way is just to find them on the street, let off two rounds, and just walk away, hood up. Yeah. No fuss, no muss. I think you're right. <laughs> right. Let's plan a murder. Brilliant. Because I don't understand <laughs> how it's done in the modern day and someone gets away with it. Yeah. Let's say I'm trying to kill you, right? Cool. Yeah. So first I have to find your address. I'd have to go to England. So now there's records of me searching your address. There's records of me being in the country. I then have to get to your place. I rent a car or I take an Uber. And then all along that route are cameras <laughs> that are tracking the license plate of the car I'm in. And yeah. I've got a phone on. 
on me and that's being constantly picked up on every cell tower yeah. <laughs> see that's why you you kind of trust modernity return to monkey where you have to do something like this i remember there was a story about someone who was trying to be like a type bit ingenious with that where they ordered a hit through a hitman and the hitman was quite quite smart problem he had a fitbit that fitbit got tracked all the way around to the place where he was caused was caught. First thing you want to do is leave your phone at home. If you're Ubering to your murder, <laughs> I think like you Let's say I Uber within five kilometers of your place. Okay. And then I just start walking to your place. The whole route is gonna have cameras along mm -hmm. it. I get to your place and what do I do? I like knock on the door and then you answer it and then I have to go like bang. Everybody sees. Look at this dude. No, okay. <laughs> nope. That means I need to break into your place. What do you do from there? This is becoming so difficult. I, I yeah. say you gotta smash the window in and make it look like a robbery gone wrong. Bang. Uh, on the way out, I steal the DVDs real quick. <laughs> in my shirt. Then I, I guess you just sort of take off running. It'll still be a robbery gone Stop wrong. Stop at a store so to get some candy. Start tracking these cameras. Yeah. They'll just start following the line. We got him. I think you're putting too much faith in the CCTV system. I think it is quite fallible. They're not everywhere. Right. Anyway, point is, it's impossible ordinary things. It cannot <laughs> be done. I just think, you know, if aliens are real, that just completely changes the way everyone sees the world. It would be amazing. Maybe. What, what do you reckon the alien weapon would be? Well, the anal probe is the classic. <laughs> of course. And combined with the gay bomb, it's not really a weapon. <laughs> it's not a weapon. <laughs> do on my a, a medical analytical tool. That's a good point. <laughs> do you reckon they clean the probe between analyzing humans? It depends what the aliens are doing with the probe in. Are, are, like, are they just m measuring butthole circumference <laughs> for their files? <laughs> yeah, what, what could be done there? <laughs> that wouldn't just be easily done with some sort of alien pill or an x-ray. I reckon they pull out that probe, go, this is fucking disgusting. Ew. And they just shoot it one up the airlock. <laughs> they go, another one. They're all gross. This is gross every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. It's horrible. You would think there would be just as And what's even worse than the bloody antenna? <laughs> Much mouth probing as there would be. Hopefully not with the same probe. Oh. <laughs> If you were going into a medieval battle, what's your choice? We, you know, they're all on a wall. A Which do you pick? Which way, Western man? I've heard a scythe is pretty useless. arm or sword and shields. A mace, though. I think a mace is good stuff. Right. Like, it can bludgeon, it's sharp. It's easy to use. I don't particularly want any of these, to be honest. That's picky. Wouldn't go with um, a scythe. I'm actually not here for the battle. <laughs> just the, the battle yeah. field is just in need of a bit of a train. So if I could have any weapon, it would just be like this. Sword and shield. I, I mean, it's a classic mm. for a reason. Let's say you and me, one on one, right? Oh, right. So I've got the spear. You've got the shield and sword. Who do you reckon wins? Uh, I reckon me. Reckon? I've just got to bide my time and get you to stick the spear into the shield. And then I'm just cutting your spear in half and you're done. I yeah, don't think but you're blocking anything with yeah. that shield. Oh, you reckon? Yeah, I think I'm poking at you, poking at you, and you're moving your shield around, and then I managed to get just a little bit behind your shield at one point, and then I just press in. You can't get my fingers, though. That's cheating. <laughs> That's not fair. And actually, like, with a, with a very good armor, which also has chainmail underneath, it can withstand a lot of piercing. That's what the purpose of it was. And also, you can basically, if you anticipate a trajectory enough, if you have good enough reflexes, I know you are a little bit hampered in your movements, but you can basically just deviate the strike and just stab the person. The, the key is just not to be afraid of the frost. Yeah, <laughs> boy. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> no, Honestly, that's like wrong. Spear versus sword. Uh, spear versus sword. Brilliant. We can put some money on it. All right. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I see. I see. Yeah, he's he's sticking him. He's gonna try and stick him good. I fought mud crabs more fearsome than you. I like the spin technique. <laughs> mm. Like, so you don't know what, when it's coming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. The the, the charge. Exactly. Is the thing. Mm. As soon as the spear guy has. It was at this moment that he knew Oof. he fucked up. Got you to stop within yeah, spear distance. Yeah, he's to go for the. Yes. It's game over. Spear wins. Yeah. Mm. Then you're done. The key is not to be spooked by mm. the spear. <laughs> yeah, don't fear the spear. Charge in like a motherfucker. And he's half dressed like a bank robber and half dressed <laughs> like a beekeeper. <laughs> yeah, now that you pointed that out, yeah. It'd give me all your bees. <laughs> Where's the queen? <laughs> fear the sting of bee man. <laughs> Just back on Maces, what do you think of this? Morning Star. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that would fuck you up pretty good. You know what the problem mm. is with this weapon? 
it's got so many points and they're like if you hit someone right in the head with it in the heat of battle it is liable to get stuck mm, and just then being you're lost in inside. the situation where you're like trying to pull Absolutely. it out of someone's yeah, head and then someone puts something in your head that would be a bummer to clean too like this yeah. thing would not go in the dishwasher very well at all <laughs> <laughs> what's the like really weak version of this like you could have this ball but instead of spikes you've got those like finger nail cheetos that would be pretty good i'm trying to think of like a nerf version of the morning star mm. i like the idea of this if it was much much smaller like mm. the head was half the size of a golf ball and it had these tiny little prongs <laughs> it would be exceptional for serving olives <laughs> yeah that's true i like that <laughs> right you could take one of these and then you just put like a dog too on it <laughs> and then you just chase people around the battlefield with yeah. just no one wants to get the dog shit on them you know that's true you'll be feared on the battlefield <laughs> it's like when you go to prison obviously i'm not strong i don't have the option of like going up to the biggest guy in there and <laughs> that wouldn't go well no. the only other option is to just act like the craziest fucker possible I have shit on a stick. Utterly unpredictable. <laughs> terrifying. Well, believe it or not, that's actually a thing that they do. Remember being in... What's the equivalent of that? Whatever grade that is, when you are 13, 14 years of age, uh, we were on an excursion where we got to visit the prison. Uh, in there, one of the guards had also worked uh, abroad. He told us because like there are big differences between Danish prisons and uh, ones in let's say just southern Europe. And in there, in, I think it was a prison in France or perhaps was it in Spain? I'm not too sure, but at least it was in the southern part of Europe, where um, during one of his um, shifts they found some weaponry. Where he then commented that some of the things that they would do was to add fecal matter at the end of. Uh, shaves for example just to poison the person it's, it's disgusting but it's super effective for them apparently human being <laughs> if you spill you know <laughs> why is this funny to me if you spill your apple juice right over the front of your shirt can you just pop back to your cell and throw on another shirt Surely. <laughs> or you're like oh that's my only one <laughs> and then you have to walk around as the guy with apple juice <laughs> down the front of your shirt they must have a wardrobe they must have a place where they put their pants and socks and toothbrush shivs and all sorts that's a weapon the toothbrush shiv prison shivs is that like a little derringer pistol sergeant hal birchfield oh everyone had those <laughs> mustaches back when are they coming back? I can't really grow a mustache very well, so I'd be a bit upset if that happened. Really? I have a mustache, Let but me... it's a bit of a Howard Hughes sort of like pencil It's not bad. Mustaches. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Let me have a look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, see what I mean? I've got what I like to call the anti-Hitler. <laughs> I can't grow it in the middle. I don't know if this is racist. <laughs> okay, c c continue. <laughs> have you ever noticed how... <laughs> People from Eastern Europe tend to have that sort of facial hair, the same sort of facial hair that you do. To be honest, I can't say I have noticed that, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing to go okay. ahead with okay. it. Serbian man. All these men have uh, thick mustaches, so I'm not sure uh, your theory Slavic holds. man. <laughs> it's yeah, just no, we'll apart real quick. <laughs> I'm amazed that you've typed in Slavic man and none of them are squatting. You know what? This theory sucks. <laughs> these people will have regular moustaches. I don't yeah. know why you proposed it, to be honest. It's kind of racial <laughs> and it's not true. While we're on racist things, I've got one more. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, please continue. <laughs> have you ever noticed oh, no. that Asian people... <laughs> when they park their car, <laughs> okay, always gets better. park their car backwards into the car space. That <laughs> I can. <laughs> okay, I remember the thing that uh, was it. Carl Kinane, who's once said that, yeah, racism can manifest in different ways. He's not always negative though. Like you can go to the park and be like, oh, they play frisbee, right? It's not negative, but <laughs> it's racist. But like this one right here is like a positive thing. So we do that all the time. That's how my dad taught me how to park. They always do it so that it's more efficient when you go out. I cannot say that I've spent enough time observing other people parking. Let Here's alone... my experience, right? I live near a pretty Asian suburb. Right, I love it. I love going down there, shopping there all the time. Where you normally see people parking, they just, you know, drive forward straight in. 
But for some reason, every time the local residents here park, they reverse in. And I'm <laughs> thinking, like, is it something they are culturally taught that has some sort of advantage? Okay, in an emergency, you can drive out faster. Is that what it's about? Hmm. Is yeah. it like, oh, I want to show off my car? Maybe. Yeah, look at the front. Much nicer. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say it is representative mm. of a culture that forward plans. Ordinary <laughs> things, bigot, confirm. <laughs> <laughs> if you're done with your racist tirade, ordinary things, I'd like to move back onto the, the topic at hand. I do have an Asian Just because you have an story. Asian friend does not make you not racist. Wait. Have you ever been to Cambodia? <laughs> no, I haven't. When I was there back in the day, well, I got in their taxi and the guy was like, oh, you're new here? And mm. I was like, yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and then he said, do you want to go to the firing range? And I was like, yes. <laughs> okay. You can use a machine gun, you can use uh, some handguns. I was like, that's sick. And then he went up a level and was just like, if you've got launcher. 200 American dollars, you can even fire a rocket launcher at a cow. <gasps> no way. What? Right? <laughs> I will admit that the option did intrigue me, but I was pretty broke. Like that would then, have been so. the obvious next <laughs> level to go with. It would have been like... a bit gross and maybe I would have felt a bit ashamed I didn't of myself. Think. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I went. I didn't use the rocket launcher, but I did hock a grenade. Which was fun. Cow killer confirmed. Yeah. Oh, you threw a grenade? What was that like? Yeah, it was great. Was it spooky? I was scared. The guy, he could tell. Oh, God. This nervous <laughs> Englishman is going to no. drop him into his shoe or something. But I also saw the pen where they had all the sheep and cows. Oh, no. Their little <laughs> nervous faces. I'd be nervous that, like, the pen wouldn't want to come out that easily. And so I'd hold it in one hand and then pull the pin. But then I'd also pull the grenade <laughs> out of my hand. <laughs> at the same yes. time. Yeah. If you were to just play football with a grenade, would it ever explode as long as the pin didn't come out? I think not because the whole point, if I recall, the right. pin, There's a pin is creating to a secure more pressure with some like a piece of metal that something's connecting. Yeah. Okay, I've got a better question. You pulled out the pin, right? Yeah. Do you think you would be capable of pulling that out with your teeth? No. no. Really? It wasn't quite like a key of a car, but it was like there was a bit more of a mechanism to it. I think that a lot of these, again, falls back down to movies, right? I don't think... I don't think it's that easy. Yeah, yeah interesting. Because I've seen that with, like, you know, there's Tom Cruise at the end of that movie that's on the screen right now, and he, he's got, like, a mouthful of grenade pins at the end. And he's like, ha I've defeated the big bad. And I was always wondering, like, oh, I bet that's not that easy to <laughs> do. Oh, amazing. I didn't realise you had the expertise. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, I, I didn't really feel like much of expertise. I could only afford one. It's funny, um, the guy who's editing this, he's ex-army. Oh, right. So oh. he's probably, like, laughing at us right now. Because I'm sure he's got all sorts of experience. Like it's been strange from listening to them. Tanks. I'd, I'd like to drive a tank. That would, I mean, wherever lets me do that. that Straight would back sweet. to killing the cows. Can't drive one over a cow. <laughs> would you go back to Cambodia now? Yes, if only for the breakfast. The Cambodian breakfast is exceptional. Really? Why? It's like pork and rice. Oh. But my God, the pork is absolutely delicious. Oh. My core memory Sounds tasty. of the three weeks I spent there was just like getting up every morning and being like, another breakfast, please. <laughs> delicious. Yum, yum. I got to tell you, there's no breakfast food that I like, but in like Asian countries it's like what's for breakfast well like duck and yeah, chili on dinner. rice with some green beans yeah perfect you're setting yeah. yourself up for the morning mm. you should be loading up you, the biggest meal of the day should be in the morning that's when I start my morning I have sausage eggs bacon the whole nine yards so I just get up and uh, cram my little gullet <laughs> of food I also wonder whether it's like the cuisine that is in Europe and in Western societies required so much preparation yeah. that there were only certain things Things that you could get done by breakfast time. Yes, I think in I other think so. countries, it's someone's job to get up really early and cook for like yeah. everyone else. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're <laughs> trying to say. It's that you didn't drive a tank in Cambodia because they park them all backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Magical weapons, yeah. Excalibur, sword in the stone. What's the one that's or found in the in sea. A lake with a lake? That is the same. also Excalibur. <laughs> I think one of the stories is that when King Arthur dies, he just like tosses it in the <laughs> yeah. lake. Ah, no man can pull the sword from this stone. Mm. These strong men come along and they're pulling at it and smudging up the handle. <laughs> <laughs> Up comes Arthur. Oh, please. Oh, go on then, sir. Can I ever go on the swording? Wait, is that the actor from uh, the Merlin TV show? The jig? Oh, we'll all be laughing at you, kid, but go on. I guess he lubes it up and then he just pulls it yeah, out. Yeah, it's easy for him. That's the idea, isn't it? That means he gets to be mm. king, which is an interesting system of 
governance. <laughs> I reckon we should go back to whoever's the strongest gets to be the leader. I like that idea. Once in a while, I do see someone who's kind of weak and pathetic, and I think, why do you get to be in charge? I think it should be whoever's the strongest or who's <laughs> ever slept with Half the most women. Hey, now you're thinking. But how would you prove that you would slip with the most number of women in order to become <laughs> the king? I just like the idea that the, a guy would show mm. up and just be like, yeah, I'm running for president, <laughs> and here is a list of 50 women you can call up. Here's a few kids that look like me. <laughs> like a bad list of reference. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I use you as a reference? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you running for president? So instead of having a sex scandal, it mm. would be like, yeah, it turns out he wasn't having that many affairs. Oh, oh no, Harry. He's loyal to his wife. Boo. What's going on? <laughs> Get him out of there. How hard is it to put a sword in a stone? That's a really good point. That would be much more difficult than pulling it out of the stone. So the guy who put it in there, that should be the guy who's the king. <laughs> what else have we got for mystical weapons? Poseidon has a trident. Poseidon's trident, good one, yeah. So he can command the sea with that, can't yeah. he? He can like, make the waves move, make Pretty the fish powerful. fuck each other, something like that. If your trident mm. controls the ocean, what's the point of like the pointy bit? Like, he's not using the trident as you well can... as a weapon, right? Wait, what's the point of a trident? That's a good point. Yeah, actually, yeah, what you can a trident and also do with the sea? What is a trident? Is it used for catching fish? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about this. Is a sure. three-pronged spear is used for spearfishing. No way. Oh, okay. I guess it does make sense. If you're, like, going at a school of fish, you, you want as many prongs as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> what you really want is a five-pronged spear, right? Because, see, this is 2D. Explain why it's five. Yeah, uh, 3D. No. Okay, hold on. It goes down like that. Yeah, I'm with you so far. Now, if you've got a spear mm. that goes like this, then, oh shit, I missed it. Or the fish was over here, and so <laughs> I missed it. So what they're doing is they're making two more prongs. Nice. But that's only 2D. What you really want is five, because... Yeah, I mean, that is superior. <laughs> In Stella. <laughs> I think... In contrast to this extremely bloodthirsty and violent episode, we should walk through a meadow holding hands All right. <laughs> into the sunset. Yeah, we'll do that for about three seconds until yeah. the editor gets bored. Yeah. No, all right. Outro. Right. First thing I'm going to do is fill in that moustache gap. No, stop it. I've got a permanent stop mark in one hand, and I'm holding your head down with the other. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm hacking the mainframe, and um, I'm going to turn your webcam on. No, you don't. <laughs> hey, everyone, he's a furry. He's wearing his fur now. <laughs> How about this, right? I'm going to be an unsuspecting victim, and you are going to be an assassin. Brill, okay. And if you manage to kill me, then the episode ends. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rambling. Okay, well, I'm coming up behind you with a plastic bag, manhunt style. Hey, I, you can't just walk into my house, so I keep the door locked. <laughs> That's why I've kicked it in with my <laughs> muscles. I heard that. Now I've run up to my panic room. I'm hey, boozing. Police. Don't worry, the police are in my pocket. Bribed the entire police. It was easy. Now I'm going to put some C4 <laughs> round the corners of your panic room and I'm going to blow this bitch up. Button press. I now open the door with my scythe <laughs> and, and I begin to sweep at your legs. Ah! Swish, swish. <laughs> now the hunter has become the hunter. Get away. I'll swat your hand away and pull out a funky looking knife. Oh no, it's got dog do on the end of it. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the yeah, smell of chili I'm sauce. I'm running up the stairs and doing a very difficult action for the editor to keep up with. Don't worry, I'll make it easier for you by flinging a shuriken into the back of your head. Yeah, I like the idea that I'm running away, right? And mid-sentence. <laughs> We've got to end this episode, and I'm going to end it by ending you. Okay. I break down your door, and I start throwing some shurikens at you. Ah, too late. I have picked up a wooden table and thought that. Well, that's okay, because that was just my distraction for my real plan, <laughs> which is to feed you this delicious poisoned apple. You cannot resist its juicy goodness. <sighs> I already had breakfast. Oh, what did you eat? It was some duck, some chili, and some green beans from Cambodia. Oh, that sounds absolutely delicious. I've really lost the appetite for murder. Would you instead like to hold hands and have Walter a delicious Field. Cambodian breakfast? That sounds lovely. Maybe we could kill a cow as well, like you did in that Cambodia. That is not canon. Yeah, I know. It was a cow was a child. <laughs> a small Cambodian refugee. They had survived a much worse country and finally made it to Cambodia. The place where they could finally prosper, but then they ended up in a hole, receiving... <laughs> The bad end of a grenade from ordinary things. <laughs> <laughs> this is rubbish. Let's try something else. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, 
go to your computer right now. Type in tickets to Syria. Comma. What happens if I destroy my passport? <laughs> How do I renounce my citizenship? <laughs> How to buy ammo on deep slash dark web. <laughs> How to smuggle cash on plane. Do x-rays detect LSD? <laughs> they don't. Save you a Google there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> What's like a shitty version of Pablo Escobar? No outro this time. Video is over. Nice. Oh, Some weird recommended videos there. <laughs> so which one do you want to watch? We should watch one of my videos on the main channel. I like watching myself and listening to myself. Yeah, me too. Mm. Is one of my videos in the recommended? No? Oh, that's fine. Doesn't matter. No, I haven't watched your videos in ages. No. Is it just me? Um, or do you also have like tremendous contempt for the audience? I hate them. <sighs> Can't stand them. Like, I I hate the fans. They're the worst. I want to turn a weapon on them. <laughs> this is the best. And then on this is the best out ever. I want to tell them. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, no, the video's still going. <laughs> Someone just turned the lights off in the lounge. <laughs> Quick, cause a distraction. Quickly. Uh-oh. Now the Spanish version of the same video has started playing. Wait, quick. What's the Spanish word for weapons? Armas. Mm -hmm. Armas! Keska e armas! Uh, oh, I'm about to do that. Um, <laughs> now I'm doing the in- You're still on my bed. <laughs> doing the Spanish intro, baby. <laughs> okay, maybe something like, Ah, welcome to this Spanish version. It is exactly the same content. Instead, it is a lot sexier. <laughs> ah, a beautiful weather woman has entered the room. And we shall make sweet music together. Bing, 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 bing. And then we just like clicking on the maracas. <laughs> Fuck, this is gonna be a 10 minute outro. And then I. Oh no, poor editor. <laughs> Hitman style. Alright, bye, ordinary <laughs> thing. Okay, that was a pretty ingenious end. <laughs> but I feel bad for the editor. <laughs> Where he has to do every single thing they say. But that was Weapons by the Internet Historian alongside Ordinary Things. If you liked this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button and or subscribe if you want to see more. Of course, go and subscribe to the respective channels, Incognito Mode as well as Ordinary Things. And with that said, I wish you all to have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one. Bye.